Okay, can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. Um, welcome tonight. Uh, tonight, I'm supposed to be in the, our hotel room uh, on the Wi-Fi, and um, I'm really sorry, but we didn't make it to the hotel. Um, my family is, uh, and I drove across, we left last night uh, from Utah to arrive in uh, Burlington, Illinois, and we're not there yet. So I'm having to um, improvise, and, and I apologize that I'm not in my hotel room where it's very quiet. So can you hear me okay? Okay, um, I apologize uh, if you hear an echo. I'm trying to be in a quiet place, um, but I'm, I'm improvising because we're not, we're not to the hotel yet. So um, anyways, you can see my screen and you can, you, you can hear me, okay? Is that correct? <laughs> well, it's not really a quiet place, but it's my best uh, attempt at the quiet place. So, Kim, I'll, I'll tell you that later. <laughs> and if you guess where I am, um, kudos to you. Um, okay, yeah, so first announcement is if you're still having problems with getting Adobe Flash CC downloaded and installed, um, um, I'm trying to help each of you uh, to connect with the IT help desk. And um, so, let's see, the help desk is supposed to help you get it downloaded and installed. And uh, for those of you who are still experiencing problems, just keep me posted and updated. I'm extending your deadline until you can get that done, okay? Is that, does anybody have any questions about that? I'm gonna try the video really quickly, just for a second. There you go. That's, that's where I am. There's your hint for where I am. <laughs> Anyways, I'll turn it back off. Okay, so um, if you have any more questions about that, uh, go ahead and write them here. Yeah, if you have any problems getting uh, Adobe CC downloaded, make sure you do it using the announcements that I posted. Don't go to the website and download it. You know, don't go to the Adobe website. And uh, if you uh, don't go there and download it from the Adobe website because that is not the school licensed version. Also, I want you to know don't update your software to 2015 because if, if you do, the last student who did that, uh, it converted their license from the school license to a temporary unlicensed version, and the student had to uninstall the updated 2015 and the 2014, and then reinstall from the school. So don't do the update, okay? Oh, he said the update was fixed? I just got an email. Um, oh, Kim, did you say Mr. Jason Merrill said that that update was, was okay? Okay, I actually haven't received that memo yet. The email that I uh, just received, um, I, I don't think, I don't think all of us are, have received that memo. Yeah, there's no reason to update for the purposes of this course as long as you have Adobe CC 2014 installed. And we'll, uh, so don't worry about updating, just bypass that for now. And, uh, I'll connect with Jason to make sure that we're all on the same page.
Yeah, I think that the uh, Adobe detects that you have 2014 CC installed and it prompts you to do an update. I received an email from uh, David Jensen regarding this message and, and I suggested that he hold off. So are there any more questions about um, if you're delayed or the upgrade? Oh, oh, I see. The school site had 20, CC 2015. That's interesting, Kim, because I, I just downloaded the, uh, I just downloaded that again, and I'm quite sure that it was 2014 that downloaded for me, Mac Adobe CC. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is 2015. It's this file right there. Okay, now one other thing that I fixed um, when I added the assessment in there uh, in the classrooms, I forgot to uh, enable it to be, to be submitted. So right now, the, um, you're able to submit, I fixed that. So go ahead and, and submit, you're going to su submit your um, assessments. Um, you can submit your assessments now in the inside the class, okay? I think that's all the announcements I had for now. Are there any additional questions before we begin? I'm going to see if I can bring up the picture uh, that Dave Jensen emailed me regarding this update in case you are wondering. Uh, he attached it in an email to me. Let me see if I can see that here. Uh, hold on. Yeah, this is it. So if you see I think this will show up right here. So when you click on in your Creative Cloud and you click on apps and you see this message here, this is what I'm saying. Don't worry about that right now. Okay? Don't worry, worry about this. Okay. Okay, so um, so Phil just asked a question. Dave, I see your question. One second. Phil asked the question, what are you looking for to submit for the assessment? And uh, Phil, if you watch the recording, you'll see, I'll go over that again here. You, when you output your work that we went over, that uh, review of the tween animation, you'll output the FLA file will be already there, and then you'll also output this um, in HTML and HTML right here. You'll have an HTML file and a JavaScript file. Is this is this your question, Phil? What are we supposed to upload? Am I answering your question? What are you looking for to submit the assessment? And so you need to submit these, these files, but put them in a folder. Yes, put them in a folder and then compress the folder and submit the zip file. The assignment uh, Dropbox requires that you submit it in a zip file. So all three files will be together and you, you submit just the zip file. Does this answer your question, Phil? It's easy to do that. Um, I think that there, there might even be a way where you can select it, right click, and do a compress. So, Phil, it's easy when you put them all in a folder, and you just do right click on the folder and create the zip file. But realize this, that you can actually select the files, 
the, the FLA, HTML, and JSS. Then right click on the selected and do this, compress three items, and it will do that. There it is right there, see that? So you could, in other words, you don't have to create the folder, you can just select the three files, right click, and create the zip file. Okay, are you good, Phil? Okay, great. And uh, Drew asked a question, are we submitting to the Dropbox or on the week one assessment page? Oh, boy, good question, Drew. Be careful, when I say Dropbox, I didn't mean, I didn't mean for you to think that I was talking about the Dropbox software, this. I was not talking about that when I used the word Dropbox. I actually was uh, referring to the, the submit, the week one uh, assessment, yeah. So it's a good, good clarification, Drew. I'm, uh, yeah, don't, don't, uh, I didn't mean to talk about Dropbox, the cloud storage, when I said Dropbox, okay? Good, good clarification. All I meant to say was the, the box for submitting the, the assignment. Now I'll, I'll click to it so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was not referring to Dropbox, the cloud. So here, I'll show you what I mean. Click on the assessment and uh, it will be, I think I need to go into, um, let me go into uh, student view and you'll be able to see the submit button. And this is what I'm referring to. Just so everybody's on the same page. This one right here, submit ass assignment. So click on the submit assignment button and upload your zip file. This will only take a zip file. Okay, so don't get frustrated if you try to upload the HTML file only or the .js file only or the .fla file only. You need all three. And so it will only take a zip file. Okay, is everybody good? Good on that? Any more questions about the, uh, that particular question? Good, okay. Now, um, Dave Jensen asked, can you open up weeks two, three, and four? And the answer is, um, I just need to uh, do a little bit more. They currently are set up to uh, open up midnight, Sunday night right now, and I'll, I'll do my best to to uh, get that opened up sooner. Kim says all of them. Yep, I'll get them opened up as soon as possible. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of me um, making sure it's all updated. Okay. Yep. Very good, I will work on that. Um, in fact, Dave, Dave, at the end of uh, tonight, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll share the discussion with everybody right now, you know, after we're done, at the end, just so that you can begin tonight see what the discussion is about. That way you won't be waiting on me for what you're asking for. Okay, I think I've got all the questions answered. Oh, Kim, you asked the question, do I need to go back and download the 2014 one? No, don't. Just stay with the WCC that you got from the school site. You're good to go. And that was the other question I think that I, that I missed. Okay, no, yeah, just keep yours. You're good. As long as you have a WCC, you'll be fine. Um, I had thought that uh, it was 2014, but but I, I'm the one that uh, downloaded it earlier. So you're good. As long as you have Adobe CC, if it's 2015, you say it is not there now. Um, Kim, what are you referring to? What's not there now?
Um, okay, you just looked at the school site. 2015 is not there to download. Uh, I'm a little bit confused because um, you said you already downloaded it, and uh, I downloaded the, this is what I downloaded, Mac Adobe CC from the school site two days ago. I'll just see really quickly, so we can move on here, uh, really quickly what, what this, I'm, I'm hoping you didn't, you, there's not a problem, because everybody's dependent upon the school site to have the, I'm not sure where that file is that I just extracted. Hmm. This is it here. It's about six gigabytes large. That's the file for us. Student install. Anyways, um, the announcement has the directions. I'll just double check and need to make sure this is all working for everybody. Uh, you download the software. This is how you download it, by the way, if you haven't done it yet. Okay, this is what we're downloading right there. Macintosh Creative Cloud 2014. Okay, so I'm gonna move on right now. Um, this is what we're having everybody download, and I don't wanna spend any more time talking about the 2015, okay? And um, just this is what you're supposed to download and install. And just, if you have 2015, it's good, we're fine. We just need to make sure you have Adobe C, uh, Flash CC, okay? All right. And if you have any questions or concerns or any problems at all, then contact the uh, IT Help Desk. That's the name of the file that you download. This is exactly how large it is. If, you're, if yours is not this large, then that means that the download failed and you need to re-download it. It needs to be exactly that large. And then if it is, you'll know that you've got the whole thing. Okay, now. Let's now talk about the uh, um, assignment, and then we'll talk about the assessment. Can uh, does anybody have any um, any anything they want to share uh, with the rest of the class on what they're working on for their storyboard? I haven't yet begun download or install. Um, grading any of those. So Drew, Drew says he's got 12 pages. Drew, what did you decide to use for your, um, what did you decide to use for your template, Drew, for your storyboard template? Oh yeah, the AI one, okay. 
So, Drew, are you open to uh, sharing with the group some of your work? Would you like to do that? Okay, great. By the way, if you guys noticed, I updated the uh, I updated the assessment and included the uh, PowerPoint template. Um, so um, I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, I I I, um, I uploaded a PowerPoint template, and I also uploaded a sample of the storyboard using the AI template. If, uh, and I, I sent an email out to everybody letting them know that uh, uh, that was updated. So hopefully everybody saw that and was able to download the sample. Uh, and also, if they're interested in the PowerPoint one, they could download that template. I don't have a sample using that template though. Yeah, Dave, uh, you're you're got a you're a little special case there. Um, I don't know if you saw my email, but the HTML file that uh, you created was actually the one that includes the Swift file. So, yeah, so we'll have to work with that. Yeah, the email that I sent out is the one that said um, the assignment was updated. That's the one. Just a little email that says, or excuse me, the assessment was updated. That's the email I'm talking about, Kim. It goes out to everybody. Uh, it wasn't really an email per se as much as it was an announcement that uh, Canvas sends out. I, I check a checkbox if I make a change the assessment of the assignment, and then I then sends that out to uh, everybody. Okay, looks good. Uh, if you want, you can uh, turn on your audio. It, it, it's it's up to you. And by the way, I also updated the. Uh, the assignment to say or, uh, um, that it only has to be see, 30 seconds to a minute and a half. I'm pretty sure that was, that was the, it's not gonna need to be five minutes or three minutes. It's just, I talked to Caroline and she recommended between 30 seconds and a minute and a half. Well, if I had more um, slides here, I could do more for what I've got, but this is all I've got so far, so. Yeah, this looks good. So, um, so you're, you're, you're telling the story of uh, some of the work you've done? And yeah, I came up with it for Jet, and I've, Still trying to figure out what I want to call it, but uh, yeah, it goes through my, my degrees that I have so far, my uh, web page, which was my first big love, and then a wireframe that I was making for uh, another class, when, and the website that came from it, and then my websites that I have, and uh, little thumbnails of the pictures, giving them the option to click on the picture or wait for the slideshow, and then my logo. Okay, good. Two, one, two, three. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, good. You've got the timings in there. You've got a little bit of a description of what the uh, frame is going to include. Yeah, I'm going to put more in there as to what, you know, how it's going to fade in or fade out or that kind of thing. I, I just hadn't done that yet. Sure. Yeah, this is a great start. Yeah, it's good to uh, plan it out. You, you start to feel like you're a movie maker when you start creating a storyboard. Yeah. Yeah, and um, tonight we're going to go over the various interactions that uh, are possible. 
And uh, so just so that everybody kind of has an, an, a good idea. Now that I, I think of it, uh, before I forget, um, the department is going to, uh, has asked that all the instructors teach their classes um, earlier in the week. So I'm going to, I'm going to change it so that we don't meet on Friday, but only Monday night and Wednesday night. Just before, uh, just so I don't forget. So next week we'll meet Monday night and Wednesday night for two hours each night. Okay, that's great. Um, let's see, who else said that they could share their work? Let's see. Yeah, Phil said he started with the PowerPoint template with the screenshot, the slides, and then did the AI one. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Go ahead and share. You can turn on your audio if you wish. Oh, okay. You bet. We'll come back to you. I think. Uh, you're still sharing your screen, are, are you okay? We, we actually can see your, your, uh, your slides. Yeah, we, we see you fine. Oh, now, no we don't. You're no longer sharing. You actually were sharing, and we saw your um, your storyboard. Did you try that? Okay, again? now I think it's working. And I can hear you. Can you hear now? All right, let me try sharing again. I got three monitors. Not confused. Okay, Kim asked a question. So, what? What? Uh, before I forget, what format are we uh, to turn in our um, our storyboard? And uh, to answer your question, Kim, if you use the Adobe Illustrator, I want you to save that in the PDF format. And if you use the PowerPoint, why don't you save that? Uh, just the PowerPoint slide file is fine. Does that answer your question? Kim? Yeah, if you don't hear me, that's because the internet slowed down and then caught back up. So, apologize for that. That's the Wi Fi acting up. So, um, one second, David. Does that answer your question, Kim? Oh, okay. So, the question is what format do we submit? the storyboard in, and the answer is if you use the Adobe Illustrator uh, template, uh, save that out, uh, publish it as a PDF, and upload the PDF. If it's the uh, PowerPoint slideshow that you use, you can just upload the PowerPoint slideshow as is. Um, PowerPoint actually has an export, uh, but don't you don't need to worry about that. Does that answer your question, Kim? Are you good? That's, uh, that's, and I'm just referring to the assignment of the storyboard. As you know, the assessment 
is a zip file, okay? That's different. All right, Drew, go ahead and uh, take us through your, uh, your storyboard. It looks great. Did you um, unmute yourself? I'm going to unmute you, okay? All right, I can hear you now. Yeah, I don't know what happened to all my controls. But anyway, don't, I mean, this part of it is just notes, so it's sure. not proper. But it's that slide. Again. By the I'm way, to... oh, this looks good. Um, give me, give me, um, I'm going to take one second. Click on view. I'm going to show you something. Uh, go up to the very top, click on view, uh, PowerPoint, and bring up the view menu. And click on that. And then go to, pres let's see, presenter view. Oh, wait, maybe it's the notes page. I might be a little confused. Try for presenter view just for a second. Let me see if that's the one I'm thinking of. Maybe not. Maybe. Let's see. I'm just trying to see if it goes to a different view. It's probably because I have three screens and I'm confused with this. Yeah, this is actually fine. Uh, and then there's also. This looks good. There's also, you can change the layout of the slide that you're using. Um, and, and that's the upper left-hand corner. Yeah, click on that little arrow next to layout. And uh, look down right there, right there. And if you want, and I'm not telling you you have to do this, these are the other possible slide layouts, and that's per slide. In other words, the layout itself, the content that's on an individual slide, follows this as its layout. Um, and sometimes you can, you know, whether you see those little six icons, what that means in that square, that's where you would put an image or a video or, or something other than text, whereas the other squares in those sample layouts, you would just put text. So I'm, I'm mentioning all this because uh, that you can, after you've created a slide, you can actually change its layout. Um, but anyway, so this is perfect. I, I'm only just trying to teach you these other things you can do with PowerPoint. I, I really am not trying, I, I don't, I'm really not telling you, hey, you need to do that, okay? So go ahead, dude, this looks great. Yeah, well, what I originally wanted, this all came together on my old one, but oh well. If you want, you can show your old one. Um, you have the link to that website. I'll do it since I've got everything messed up here on my end. Okay. Uh, here's the next slide. This is actually going to fly in this way. They're just basically using the cartoon characters to bring them in. Yeah, this is this is going to be more involved than your old one, isn't it? Yeah, but I wanted the old one to actually be the opener and then just follow in. But anyway, that's it. If I can figure out how to quit sharing now. Oh, I can take care of that. Okay. Looks great, and I think that uh, some of the little Superman. Is going to like move past, move, and you're going to have the, you're going to have the, uh, I think the enterprise, I think I understood you to say that it's going to be whooshing by potentially. Yeah, that one email I sent you has the link to the website. It starts out with that. Okay, so here's a couple questions for you that the students have asked. Um, 
Did you draw all these? Drew asked. Yes. And then uh, fill us in slide sorter view. That's another view. That wasn't the view I was referring to. It's actually looking for the view that you can add notes. Um, they have notes associated with this, uh, with the slide. That was, I think, the presenter notes view, but it didn't seem to come up. So it's all, it's all good. Um, oh, really? Okay. And then um, Kim said, I get confused with one screen. Oh, yeah. You're, you must have other screens up. Oh, you, yeah, I got three monitors. Okay, good. Okay, and then Kim asked the question, can we use the effect part of PowerPoint to show what he is writing? Um, Kim, can you, can you rephrase that question? I'm not really clear uh, what that means when you, ask that, when you ask that question, so rephrase that. Okay, so go ahead and rephrase that question, Kim, and retype that, and uh, Phil, I'm gonna stop sharing, and I'm supposed to click there. I'll stop sharing. Go ahead and Phil, you can share. Just move that out of the way. Yep, good. This looks good. I was trying to find the mic. Well, what I started off with, I, this is the PowerPoint setup, and I tried to bring up the uh, Illustrator because I did screenshot each one of the slides and put it into the Illustrator setup. The only problem is that I moved the, the, the screenshots and renamed them and put them in another folder. Now I've got to go back in and redo it again. Okay, so I I want to make sure that you don't feel obligated to use the AI, um, the template, sample template, because um, this is fine. Uh, using PowerPoint and just submitting the PowerPoint, that's, that is enough. I apologize if I meant, if I allowed you to think that you had to eventually uh, get it all to the AI template. I, I did not mean to well, apply that. The, re the reason I was doing that is uh, of putting information for the timing for the, you know, for the notes on how this one to go. We had this. I'm uh, I'm not sure if it's your connection or my connection, Phil. Um, can you repeat okay. that? Uh, can you hear? Me? <laughs> yeah. It's, what it's, I said was that the AI setup had the like the on the slide was going to be and you know some notes about it, what you were going to do, and I thought we needed to have that in. Oh yeah. So that's. Uh, I, I see what you're saying, and um, that's why I, that's why I wanted to mention that uh, we can use a different layout per slide. Uh, that and either that or we can use the notes view. So once you click on view up there, and let's see what notes view says what it looks like there you go so if you want just do it like this where you type in your information there in the notes and that's each slide you can do that does that does that resolve the concern you had of adding in notes and thinking that you had to i mean yeah it it, it, it can it can be done you know i i can do it either way because like i said if i go back to the ai because of moving the screenshots to an, uh, its own folder, the the images aren't coming up on the the AI uh, storyboard. So I, I 
reload those, you know, reload those images on the storyboard again. So, I mean, it's either or. You know, I've already got some of the write-up on the storyboard. I see. Uh, for some of the slides. So, it's, you know, either or is going to, but, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I could do either or. But this is basically uh, what I stop. Awesome. Now, um, just for a moment, let's click on that. Yeah, you know, keep that slide selected, and now go up to the layout drop down, up the down down underneath the home tab, and then underneath the oh, oh. there. Up left. Sorry, over to the okay, left. Home. Oops. Click. Sorry, I got it. I got it. There we go. Okay. So click on that. And let's choose, uh, um, go ahead and click on that again. Uh, let's do content with caption uh, over to the right, uh, down, down, right there. Click that just for a moment. Uh huh. And, and now, well, I guess it, it didn't do exactly what I did. Let me, let me do something here a second. Okay. All right, let's uh, How's that. Yeah. So um, I, I'm not telling you to redo it into each of this layout, but this is the, this is actually the, the layout that I had chosen in my sample template, uh, knowing that the, okay individual could put the the uh, picture there on the right and then type the information there on the left and maybe give it a title to the slide uh, but I'm, I'm trying right. to minimize your rework so um, and and I'll let you make all the decisions on this and I'll support you which with which way you go okay okay all right you want to see the rest of yeah, yeah cool. you bet in fact, uh, if you want, you can actually okay. run the slideshow and use your arrow keys to go back and forward. So you click okay. on, you can either click on view and then I think slideshow view or you can, up there on the menu where it says slideshow, you can click on slideshow and then do right and left arrow. Can, can you see it? Yeah, it looks great. Uh huh. Okay. Try to get that thing out of the way there. Oh, that was a, okay. Some of them I kind of got rid of the the um, the animation because of moving over to the other sheet, and I was explaining about what was going to happen. Wait a minute, that came in too fast. There we go. Now, don't worry, I didn't steal these images. These are all mine. Wow. Yeah, that really definitely, it's coming together very well. Um, I really think that you're taking good advantage of the PowerPoint tool to simulate the uh, storyboard and the story itself. That's actually why I like power. I, I, yeah, because of what it can do. I, the one uh, I had gotten a uh, suggestion given to me, a, um, I wish I could remember who gave it to me so I could give her credit, but um, suggestion for the flash to do this up like a book. Yeah, especially with the images and everything, and go like have a front cover and then go to the next page and next page, which I really like that idea. Yeah, and are you saying use the 
uh, arrow buttons to navigate. Is that what I'm hearing you say? You know, and Flash? Well, like in Flash, yeah, you could set it up, like set up the command to um, have it change the pages by clicking on it. And that's it. Yeah. So like when, when you when you write up the program in Flash, you put in the the command for it to like you know I, I would start off with the the front cover of the book being on the screen, and then you click on like right side of the the front cover, and that will open up to the next page. I see. Yeah. And so you're seeing a book. Yeah. And keep flipping through like that, which um, she, you know, she knows that I do a lot of photography. So, yeah. you know, she didn't know that I was going to be putting in what was in my portfolio. But, you know, that's why I came up with the images that I added on those portfolios. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's done with uh, making you know, the front page would be a, uh, a button and then on click. Would be the action. Yeah, we'll exactly. Be, yes, excellent. Yeah, so uh, Kim asked a question uh, can we use transitions of PowerPoint to show that? And uh, yes, Kim, that's, that's why I really like it. Uh, um, I think PowerPoint, the animations that are available in PowerPoint uh, facilitate the writing of a uh, of a storyboard, an animated storyboard. So yes, go right ahead. Um, does that answer your question? Um, okay, Kim asked another question about the time of 30 seconds to 1.5 minutes, is that per frame? Uh, no, Kim, that's from beginning to end of your animation. Does that answer your question, Kim? Beginning to end of the complete movie, between 30 seconds and then one and a half minutes. Beginning to end. Can I throw one thing in about the animation in PowerPoint? Yes, please. Okay, the one thing that I, you know, I, I've used PowerPoint a couple times, and Kim and I went through a class last uh, mod that we did up like about 30, 30 so slides for, for our presentation. Um, they have a lot of good animation in them, but sometimes, it, <laughs> sorry, Kim, but um, they don't do exactly what you want it to do. You know, it, 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 it's like, you know, you can write a command on Flash or something like that to do what you want it to do. But with, uh, with, with PowerPoint, you're limited. It still has some good you know, good animation on it but you know sometimes it's like okay I didn't want it to come in from that way I wanted it to come in from this way if you know what I mean yes and and I, I realized that uh, the nice thing about flash is it's it is a programming or we can program it and fine-tune it and the um, PowerPoint it's our already can can transition canned animations. I, I say canned, meaning you can't change it. C-A-N-N-D-D. -D. Right. So. It's a general idea of doing an animation presentation. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing I like about PowerPoint is you can include audio um, as part of the storyboard. If you have any uh, music that you're wanting to play you can start playing it on on, on the first slide um, and so it's a pretty good place to design a flash movie um, you can um, and you you saw me recording the uh, audio that that one view you go into and you can actually Record audio. If if you are interested in adding an audio track, perhaps you do talking. Uh, you could even have a second audio track, both music going on, uh, perhaps, and you talking. You know, just you can be really creative with it. So, 
Yes, that's right, Phil. It truncates your audio per, per slide. That's right. So as you're going along recording audio from one slide to the next in power, and this is in PowerPoint, it definitely, the moment that you step to the next slide, it truncates that audio file for just that, just and associates it just for that particular slide. So that's a good point that when it captures, it's definitely creating separate audio files for each slide and associating them. That's a good point. I'd forgotten about that. No, no audio needed for this week's assignment. Nope. Don't need any audio planning, nothing like that. Just this is really pretty much just two dimensional, meaning uh, <laughs> no, no dimension of audio necessary. That can come later in your planning. You know, you can just uh, right now just list the asset. You know, you might say there in your notes, um, have song, particular song playing something like that. You don't need the, the physical media. Does that answer your question, Drew? Yeah, um, yeah, copywritten stuff. Uh, I'm, I don't really want to go into that. Uh, we, we advocate that you use uh, all all material that you use is, is non-copyrighted material. Some people will say, well, wait a minute, this is just not for commercial gain, or this is not for, um, this is for school and learning. And again, I don't want to go into that conversation. <laughs> so, um, and then Kim asked the question, uh, so since the whole movie is going to be max one and a half minutes, then it is, is it a good idea to, to take the number of slides and divide to get an idea of the time per frame? Um, yes, uh, you can definitely do that, Kim. Um, and, and keep in mind that the usage of the word frame in this context, Kim, is actually talking about a frame, meaning the piece of uh, the slide, you know, the, the that's what that's the context of what she's talking about the slide itself um, in, in other words like a PowerPoint slide talks about the scene you know technically it's a, it's a different scene so she's not referring to the um, the context of the frame as in the timeline frame where this is the individual frame so I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page that the frame she's talking about is just the slide itself. Am I right, Kim? Maria, did you ask the question that I missed? I just wanted to know, I got some drawings I kind of are for. I screenshot those and use those in my project. Uh, you broke up a little bit. Would you either type that question or try repeat it for me? I have some art uh, and in. Can I put can screenshot or scan those pictures and use them as part of the project? Okay, I, I caught most of that. I think it's my internet connection my Wi-Fi that's actually acting up. And uh, if you have some pictures um, that you want to use and they are, uh, they tell a story about your story, this is self-promotion, then yes, you can scan that in and uh, use that. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, Phil says um, it's like bringing a board with your frames on the board into a conference room to see what you're going to create. Yeah, definitely. It's it's really exactly what uh, cart movies do for. Um, let's see, 
movie storyboards. So you can see, if you search on that, you can actually see these in real life. Click on movie storyboards and, and, and click on images and you'll see some examples of other people in, in real life, what they look like. It's, it's, a, it's a frame per scene. And a scene is defined by a position of the camera. So not that that pertains to our conversation, but um, there is one frame, or in other words, one slide sample page of the storyboard per scene. So when the scene, the background, etc., changes, the, the point of view of the camera changes, um, then you have a new, a new slide. And so that's where we're using that same model with our storyboard. Okay, so we're, we're simulating these storyboards and in, and in its place, we're telling a story about ourselves and we're using our own images that we've created to tell that story. Okay, I think we're good for that. Now let's talk about the assessment. Can we, are there any more questions before we change gears to the assessment? Any more questions on the assignment? Great. And by the way, when you make your submission, I would appreciate it very much that you leave a, a message that says whether or not you're okay to share or, or allow me to share your work in class. Um, because that gives me permission to say, hey, here's one um, to show. Because sometimes not everybody shows up to class. And I, I'd be, I might be interested in showing some of your work. If, and, and so it's a little bit difficult. So if you don't mind adding a little comment, I'm fine with you sharing this work. That will help me so I don't offend anybody because I want to share some work. Okay, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Ken. Okay, so um, now we're at a, we have two things we need to accomplish. We need to go over the assessment, make sure there are any, any questions. Dave Jensen wants to, um, wants to go over his, um, his work. And uh, let's see. Um, okay, Dave. Um, Dave, could you open up your, uh, your FLA file and uh, and go ahead and open up that FLA file and have it in your flash and then we'll come to you in a second. Okay, now back to the assessment. The assessment is very simple. It's just a review of tweening and uh, does anybody have any questions on that? Um, I actually have put here the objectives of the week. These correlate with the assessment. No. Okay, good. And then if you look at the assessment itself, it correlates with the objectives of the week. Let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Just to help us kind of get warmed back up to Flash. And here are the uh, steps that we went over in the animation. And be sure to um, upload it as a zip file. I think I'll add some additional instructions about um, saving the product file and publishing the JS and HTML. So I'll, I'll add those to this just so that you have that and then also creating a zip file and submitting that. So I'll add that to the assessment and I'll let everybody know that I've updated that. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, he stopped sharing and I didn't start. Apologize for that. Give me one second while I share my screen. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I just assume when the students stop sharing, mine act automatically starts sharing. Okay, so I, well, all I pointed out, I think you can see my screen now, all I pointed out was that the, uh, the objectives of this week are listed in the, under objectives, and then here's the assessment. And I just mentioned that these are the steps that we went through in creating the, doing the review of our tweening animation. And I'll add to that down in here about published animation. Okay, my connection kind of went, went bad there. Publish the animation and, um, and then create the HTML and JS file and then save the project file just the .fla file, and I'll, I'll add that, I'll update this to, to include that, and then create the zip file and submit the zip. So is anybody, does anybody have any questions about that assessment?